December 2003, if my memory serves right. Met Armani, Sheku Kamara. Little did I know that, that seven years later they'd be running the biggest sub and waters club outside the UK. City. I would love to gather my people, let them all of them come together so that we live in peace and unity. Let us forget about the war, forget about the past. So I set up a supporters club with 23 members. Then all of a sudden things started getting bigger and bigger. Tony came to the branch probably in 2003 now, uh, showed us photographs and uh, the, the great story about Armani and we just put an appeal out through the branch asking for you know, old football shirts, kits, the stuff that kids have grown out of and which you'd, we'd just discard and we'd throw away. The guys that, that have worked on the project are, are genuinely decent guys, all Blues, who have seen the potential to help the people and the football in Sierra Leone in Freetown. We can provide not only a bus for their team, but also provide work for these guys. They have football and surviving, and that's it. So it hasn't just been about football, it's been different ways of making the lives of the people in Sierra Leone much, much better for us being involved in the first place. Next stop, Sierra Leone. <laughs> <laughs> Ago. Yeah, long time. Since 2003 we started. Actually started on this beach. Uh, came out here to train police officers. Been working hard all week, my first week in country. Heard a voice behind me when I'm having a beer. Would you like to buy any watches, sunglasses? I said no thank you and if I'm honest I didn't even look up. Send back home. Sure, yes. Italian, yes. I said I have some replicant sunglasses and watches. Then he said no. Thank you. Then I come again. I, I have a replicant sunglasses and watches. Then he said, No, I can't buy off somebody who has a United badge. I explained as a City fan, I couldn't possibly buy off a United fan. So he got rid of the badge. He had a big smile on his face and we talked. Yes. It's a great experience. What? Just like Ericsson, when he speaks to the boys at the training ground the last time yeah. I visit. And he said one thing to me, which I didn't know where it would lead. He said, When you go to the UK, before you come back here, if you bring me a Man City shirt, I'll be a City supporter for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I didn't know Armani well at all. Decided to bring a shirt, he met me on a Sunday again at the beach, gave him the shirt, and he took me by a real surprise if I'm honest with you. He said, I hope you don't mind, but I've set up here a supporters club for Man City. And he'd obviously researched Man City, knew everything about it. I was really pleased, but didn't know where it was going to go. It's just like, it's just like that day we saw the seed and the seed started growing. When I formed the supporters club, it did not take me too long. I set up two football teams, the youth team and the senior team. So the team was doing fine around my community, taking part in local leagues. On the first year of setting up the football club, the youth team went an inter-area community. As Tony was present at that match at the semi-final and the final and he saw the great enthusiasm of the supporters there at that time, people loving City, shouting, so he was amazed. Actually Man City Football Club came on board then um, and they donated to us kit that the players had worn and we were able to bring that over and the team was able to wear it. And one of the proudest days of my life is seeing the football team put on the professionals kit for the first time and to see the smiling faces. Tony, who was a member of the branch for a long time, uh, had a chat with us about it, telling us about the work he was doing, showed us photographs. He just, he just took off from there, really. And Tony, uh, over a cup of coffee to basically discuss Sierra Leone in greater depth. But absolutely fantastic. We had to come up with an idea to try and make the, the branch self-sufficient. 
Uh, they actually got suspended from the, the league that they were playing in because they couldn't fulfil their away fixtures. The idea was a second-hand bus. How we get it over here? We had a clue. We said we'll drive it, you know. If the team had a bus, they could use it as a team bus on a match day, but could also use it as a revenue earner during the week. We approached the club to do a bucket collection, which we did in September 2009 before the Arsenal game. Uh, various fundraising activities, different donations have come in from the branches as well. They say you, you go that extra mile, uh, and I think help, there's a hell of a lot of people have gone that extra mile. It's, it's just been mind blowing, and people have been absolutely wonderful with it. For me, it epitomised what this football club is all about. What we wanted to do was help them accelerate it. So the story that they'd engaged in was, was just so compelling. How could you not try and help that happen? What, why wouldn't you? Obviously, once we'd, we'd got involved, it suddenly became a lot more than just a project. It became a mission to make it happen. And because the club have aided us with our fundraising, it's got bigger and bigger. And here we are now, August 2010, and we're here with a 30-seat Toyota Coaster and I can't wait to see the guys' faces when they see it. They have football and surviving, and that's it. Little did I know that, that seven years later they'd be running the biggest supporters club outside the UK. Manchester City for life. The idea was a second-hand bus. How would we get it over here? We had a clue. We can provide not only a bus for the team, but also provide work for these, for these guys. It suddenly became a lot more than just a project. It became a mission to make it happen.